I'm back with Alvaro, and today we're going to be going over firmware updates. How you doing, Alvaro? I'm good. How about you? I'm great. I'm excited about firmware updates because this is one of those things where uh, it's a tool that is something that is a very critical function of a lot of like embedded systems, and also it allows me to fix mistakes remotely. Yeah. So that's very encouraging for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like after you deploy like your devices uh, out in the field, like you want to maybe add a new feature because like your product is constantly evolving. It's like that for every software yeah. <laughs> that you're gonna run on your life, or maybe uh -huh. you want to fix like a uh, emergency bug that happened, and then you want yeah, to that's... push some code to your device. Yeah, that's so closer those, to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah those <three laughs> happen. Like those are the major use cases for DFU, and it's really important for IoT and hard to do. It's not trivial. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I had a, I had a friend who was talking about uh, you know his role as a firmware engineer, and this is just like such. I mean, it's almost always the first task is like make sure firmware update is the first thing that it's solid, and now it's just kind of built in. Uh, one because we're using Zephyr, but also because of MCU boot, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I like to say that we are standing on Giant's shoulder uh, and we are leveraging the MCU boot project that now is not only supported by Zephyr, but is actually supporting other Ortoses. They are uh, having support for Embed. Uh, I'm not sure about free Ortos, but yeah, there are other OSs there that are supporting MCU boot. So yeah, mm -hmm. our, our DFU uh, like feature have uh, it's using things related to MCU boot that is going to be supported on other OSs, not just Zephyr, which is cool. <laughs> Awesome. So, so you upload a firmware image to Goliath, and then it ships it to MCU boot, and then it just kind of does all the magic. Or what? What are the different pieces in motion here? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, on our uh, feature, we added more um, more pieces to it. So, for example, when you want to push uh, some updates to your device, it's not just about the firmware itself, because maybe for your project, uh, your device is composed of multiple things. Maybe you have, for example, a Wi-Fi modem or a 3G modem that you need to update the firmware on it, not just the firmware of the host itself. Or maybe you're deploying a project that is like an edge computing kind of thing, that you have like a machine learning model that you push, that want to push to your device. So on our platform, we add uh, two concepts that are related to, to DFU. One is the artifact, which uh, like I was mentioning, can be uh, your firmware, like the main firmware, but it can be your modem uh, firmware, or it can be an ML model, maybe a file that relates to a configuration on your device. You can upload those different artifacts. And then for pushing uh, those binaries to your device, you create a release. So a release is composed of multiple artifacts, and then you can roll out your devices, uh, put mark that rollout to be targeting uh, some specific devices via, via device tags on our platform. So you have those separations of what is a binary and what is a release for your device. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, like that really allows for more complex systems. You know, the ML models, like you mentioned, that is just some. Super exciting stuff. You have a Twitter demo I think you had done on a platform with like a, a rec yeah, recognizing with like ten tennis swings. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. super cool. <laughs> let's uh, let's let's dive in. Let's uh, so what what are the first steps here? Yeah, what I'm gonna show here is uh, a live demo. <laughs> so here I have a NRF52. I cannot show here because my debug cable is short, but it's close to this configuration here. Is a NRF52, and I have an Ethernet uh, like board here for connecting my device so it's connecting to our platform over ethernet so i have it running here for example i'm gonna reboot the device uh and you're gonna see here uh, it's initializing ethernet and also printing this message here new version so we are gonna change that message and push a new firmware using our platform uh, and what the device is doing here is connecting to our D dfu functionality uh, on our IoT gateway and listening to what is the desired release that this device should be running. So when we change or create new releases on our um, platform, the device is notified that there is a new thing that it's supposed to be running. Uh, so let's dive in and take uh, step by step how to deploy a new version. So let's say that I want to change this message to be new, uh, awesome version here. <laughs> let's change a, a small debug message. So I'm going to build the binary here. And by the way, this is uh, part of our samples uh, and SDK repo. So uh, when we launch this new DFU functionality, uh, you guys are going to be available. Uh, you're going to be possible to. And so does it, does it launch as an awesome message or just a new message? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be an awesome launch. We hope so. <laughs> Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be so. So you here. mentioned that as it's uh, building too. Um, you mentioned that it, it knows, like it gets notified that there's a new release. So is it like the device stores its update? How does it actually know 
what is the latest, what it what it's currently at, like where is that stored? Yeah, the device, as we are using MCU boot, MCU boot have this information about what is currently running. So it knows the hash of the image binary and also mm -hmm. know uh, the version that is running. So when we deploy a new release, it checks the manifest that we sent to the device and then checks, oh, the manifest says that I need to be running binary version X and I'm running Y. So then I download mm -hmm. the binary and then uh, install. If I'm running the same version, it just keeps with the same uh, version. So we, we use MCU boot for that part, for detecting what is the current image and current hash. Great. Yeah. So now I have the binary here and now we need to sign with the version that we want. Um, this is an MCU boot uh, requirement. So let's create version 1.0.10 because my device is running uh, 0.9 here. So let's sign this new version here, this new binary. And then it's going to create this file here, new bin, which we are going to upload to our platform using the light CTL here um, to create an artifact. So if you artifact create, and then let's change the version here. And also you might notice there is a new parameter, here, a different parameter here. It's called a blueprint. It's another concept that we are adding to our platform, which is basically to define some things related to your hardware itself, maybe the architecture, what is the processor that is doing like more information about the device and the way that we are using for dfu is like imagine that you have a, a product and maybe you make like different revisions of that device that have different architectures you want to push the binary specific to each uh, host processor so you can use blueprint for that so in this case i created a blueprint which is an nrf52 but i was also testing here with a on the same project i have a stm32 so i can upload the stm32 binary on a different blueprint and then manage the different releases for each uh, architecture. Yeah. yeah, that's really great if, for, especially in the time of uh, part shortages as people swap out sensors or maybe even processors, which is like a really extreme change. Uh, that's really, really awesome. Yeah, yeah it's optional. Maybe your project only have uh, one uh, thing. You don't need to uh, deal mm -hmm. with blueprints, but it's a way for us to support a project that yeah. has multiple architectures. This is, uh, is this also possible to do this upload from the console? This is the new console view yeah. you're showing here, but is it possible to do it through there or does it have to be through Goliath CTL? No, you can do through through the console. Uh, usually the artifact part I, I like to do on the CLI because I mean, mm -hmm. I'm already dealing with West and like the West True. commands. Yeah. And then I yep. can just like use Goliath CTL to, to upload the binary. But every, mm -hmm. like as a lot of things on our platform, you can do on like, whatever yeah. you like more, like maybe you are more like a console person and wants to do things on the console. Uh, but if you like uh, a UI, you can do on the web. Like I'm showing here the UI for uploading artifacts. You can also do that here. That's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, example, that might be good uh, if you are using like a Edge Impulse or something similar, using some kind of other GUI tool, it might be sitting yeah. in your, your local machine. You want to just drop it on the, on the, yeah, exactly. the upload. Yeah. And as we can see here, the, uh, our platform already detects that that image is an MCU boot compatible image, so we can read more metadata about it, like the internal image size, the internal hash size, so we can compare when MCU boot installs that image, we can check that it's definitely like something that is going to work with MCU boot. <laughs> and now let's release that artifact to our device. So I have the release page here. Actually, this page I prefer much more to use on the, the web because I feel mm -hmm. like it's easier to manage than on the, the CLI. Um, mm -hmm. So here I have, for example, the version 1.0.9, which is the version that is rollout to my devices. And my device is also with the tag desk. So let's create a new release to update to that firmware that I just uploaded. So I'm going to give a name here to my version 1.0.10. And then I'm going to target my desk devices here. It's already showing the count of devices here. But that device is specific uh, have the blueprint NRF52, so it's just one device. And then I'm going to choose the artifact here, 1.0.10 that we just uploaded. I'm going to save it. And let me put the terminal right close here. Uh, the device is not going to receive that version right away. Oops. Oh, I have some scaling issues. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the device is not going to receive the version right, right away because I didn't roll out that version yet. So this is mm -hmm. an important thing. So we, like maybe you're still checking if things are correctly. You can hold that version. But now if I toggle this rollout flag here, the device is going to be notified of a new manifest. And it just received the manifest and it's checking. Oh, it's a different version. And it's downloading over yeah. Ethernet here, the new binary. 
and yeah, that is super cool. downloading and already writing to Flash using MCU boot uh, APIs. And after it finishes, it's going to swap the image to the new one. Are there size requirements on like particular platforms in terms of having like double the size of an image in order to store it in memory? Yeah, Zephyr, you define that on the DTS files on Zephyr, like you have the flash and then you have to define the layouts where you're going to save different images. And usually they have like a, I think it's three partitions. One is for image, image zero and one. So you have like two images, so you can mm -hmm. go back to the old one. And mm -hmm. there's also a scratch uh, partition that you you can use as an in-between layer to write between the two. But but yeah, you have to to partition your flash uh, for to allow to have this functionality. Yep, it's great. Uh, it finishes downloading now. MCU boot it's doing its magic and swapping the images. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now we can see here the new message. You awesome. New message. and awesome. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and yeah. it, what, what is interesting that is also uh, which is important on IoT is maybe maybe this version is not working correctly and maybe I don't want all the <laughs> devices because something yeah. bad happened. What what we can do? Oh, it already downloaded the manifest here and check that it's running the desired version. But for rolling back, we can go here and actually remove this flag here. And if I remove this flag, the device is going to roll back to the latest version that is uh, that have the the rollback flag. So for example. I can do like a, a lot of experience here. Let's say that I want to disable the old version. Maybe I don't want to roll back to this version. So I can disable the old one. The device is going to keep on the same version. And I can disable the newest one. So the device is, doesn't have a, a desired version. Uh, but then I can do a rollback now. Let's enable the two again. The device is still running. The latest is still 1.0.10. But now mm -hmm. let's disable the newest version. Now the device is yeah. downloading the old release because we yep. just made a configuration that the device is supposed to roll back. So yeah. there's a, a lot of flexibility here on how you can manage uh, your releases on the device that are yeah. out in the field. Yeah, that is uh, that is indeed magical. Uh, and uh, you still need to go download it. So like if you lost some kind of like network connectivity or something like that, so it's not like you, you know, it's not the be all end all, but boy, that'll save a couple trips out with a, yeah. uh, with a cable to all your devices. That's that's really <laughs> nice for development type yeah. stuff. And you showed as well. I mean, there's uh, you know you target things like you did with your desk, but you could also have target deployments and and things like that. So you could really start to parcel out your various things. And I love that that idea of showing kind of like that sanity check of like, hey, I've got five total devices on my account, and I'm just targeting one. That's really so useful because yeah, exactly. Maybe you want to target maybe a specific lot of devices that you tag them. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you want to, like, you have a bunch of, like, uh, a test environment that you have, like, your test devices. Like, you can select, like, which uh, devices you're going to be targeting and, like, do this kind of, like, phrase release, um, phase release. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. So what else should we know about uh, DFU? I mean, so this is, uh, I, this is a preview, I guess we should say. Yeah. Uh, if people maybe peeked at the, uh, the URL there, they would see that this is not uh, rolled out yet. Um, but what else should people know when they want to start pushing their their, their um, versions out? Yeah, I would say uh, keep your eyes closed on our uh, channels uh, and be part of our beta. Uh, but not sure when this video is going to be out, but it's, uh, we are really close on the point, this DFU feature. Uh, it's a joint yeah. effort because we have our device SDK, UI, CLI, and backend. Uh, yeah. but, but this is really close. That's why we are giving the sneak peek. Uh, on, yeah. It's our yeah. next feature. It's the, the biggest uh, the next big feature that we are going to release. Yeah. yeah, and I think, uh, you know, like we're, we're going to be rolling out to different devices as well. So Elvro is showing an NRF52 with Ethernet. We're testing on cellular, on Wi-Fi, all these things right now. And yep. uh, we will have more support and uh, we'll have it all in our docs as well. Like Elvro said, please do sign up for our beta. You can do this, do so over at uh, goliath.io. You can check out our docs at docs.goliath.io. And you can, of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, was it like and subscribe and hit the bell? I think they i think that's what the kids are saying these days uh so thanks for showing us this new feature alvaro it's been, been really cool yeah thanks again <laughs>